Now we're out here, it's the end of January, we're ice fishing, chasing down panfish. And one of the key things to look for, whether you're chasing crappies or bluegills, are those basin areas. And what do I mean by basin? Typically, it's those depressions, those whole areas within the lake, and you look on your lake map and you can look around and see where those holes are. What happens in the fall is those panfish move away from the shoreline, they move away from those deep weed lines, and they move out to the basin areas. The reason they go there is water temperature, typically in the winter, that's the warmest uh, place for the water. It has the greatest amount of food because those soft basin areas. The other thing is it kind of contains those fish so they're not moving around a lot like in the summertime you may have more of a migration in the winter time they have a tendency to move to those basin areas and stay there until late in the spring until the ice starts to move out there's one got him okay either a crappie or a bluegill we'll see what we get him here by the hole and the other thing because you're fishing in those basin areas most of the time the fish are feeding on zooplankton or stuff that's not really moving it's not a minnow uh, this is a little bluegill and if you can see here, this fish come up, I caught him right in the nose, and I'm using a mud bug here tipped with some, some arrow larvae, some spikes. What happens is those fish will actually come up and just inhale it. They don't come up and bite it, they inhale it. So some of the equipment you wanna use is something that has a real light tip. This happens to be a quick tip made by Fraybill, but you can see in the palm of my hand there, that red dot. I use that as a strike indicator. So when the fish comes up, I'll see them on the electronics, and then that tip will just twitch. It'll just barely move like that, indicating I've had a strike, the fish has inhaled it, set the hook. So having the right gear in this type of situation can really make a finesse bite uh, a lot of fun because, again, those fish aren't overly aggressive. They're just coming up in uh, what I used to call it when I was a kid, a nibble. Uh, they barely move that bait in, uh, You'll see that strike indicator move and you'll catch a fish or two. There we go. Now that tip barely moved in uh, some of the things that really make this a very effective technique. Uh, another little bluegill you can see. We'll send it back down the hole. As I'm fishing a real small jig and I'm fishing with a fire line, one pound diameter, and I got a little tiny barrel swivel there, and then with a two pound monofilament, or you can use a, a fluorocarbon. But the whole key on this with the fish in the braid in this 22 to 23 foot of water, is that even helps out when you see the strike. Because there's no stretch in that braid, you'll see the slightest movement. If I was fishing all monofilament to the bottom, I may miss some of those real light strikes. So this is a great way to really fine tune a finesse presentation fishing with a uh, quick tip or some sort of spring bobber, as well as a real small diameter braid in a small jig uh, is deadly on finicky panfish. So the fish are down there, they're just coming up to it and I'm trying to twitch it a little bit, getting them to come up off the bottom, which they are, but they're kind of finicky. They'll slowly move to the bait. And then you have to watch that strike indicator to see if they hit it. Fish is on it, I can see them on the electronics bring them up get them away from the school and a lot of times if you can get them up to move away from the school you'll get that fish to commit and eat oh, oh missed him he was up there you could see how quick that tip went and i was able to see that because i'm using the braid i'm going to drop back down to those fish and again panfish are you know can be a very aggressive fish when they're schooled up and sometimes it's just a matter of getting one or two to bite and then you'll kind of get the school going and, and you may have to change colors on your jigs a little bit later or you know try another lure down there breaking up away from the school now a lot of times there we go when people are chasing panfish on the ice they'll drop the lure right down into the school of fish and not that you can't get bit there but typically what you want to do is get that jig above the school of fish and that way you'll get the fish to move up it up to it typically you'll get the most aggressive fish uh, and when you look at a pan fish, they're kind of designed to, with their eyes to you know, feed in an upward motion. The other thing that we're using here is a little tiny jig, and a lot of people uh, don't like use the little tiny jigs, but this happens to be a tungsten jig. And what's nice about that, I can get away with a very, very small size bait, physical size, but yet with that tungsten, it allows me to get down there faster uh, and keeps me in the strike zone. 
It's kind of like using a, a tungsten weight when you're bass fishing. I'm using it for the density so I can get down in a in an area. Uh, it also allows me to present a smaller bait in a finesse type situation. So hit her pretty aggressively. Oh yeah. Not a huge one, but a nice gill. Way to go, Jace. Young buck out here cracking fish. Nice, Scott. Now, even though I'm working here in the water column, uh, using this tiny tungsten jig, there's times what I'll do is I'll put it right down on the bottom like that, okay? And then I'll just kind of bounce it up and down, kind of bang the bottom, and it creates little puffs of, of dust, if you will. That sediment comes up, and sometimes that'll attract those fish because they see something going on there. They may think another fish is feeding or something, and they'll come in to investigate, and they'll see your offering there, and uh, you'll catch a few. So. Keep moving your jig up and down, trying to get the fish to react to it. Now see, I got a fish coming in here. It's coming in from the side. You can see him there on the screen. I know he's getting closer to the bait because he's getting more yellow. I'm gonna see if I can get that fish to come up a little bit. Okay, see him rising up with the jig. Okay, got a few more coming in. See, I got a fish up there looking at it. Okay, now I'm good. I got a fish moving and I'm gonna just dead stick it. There we go. Do you see how they reacted to that? Okay, there's a nice one. Look at that fish. There's a good bluegill, huh? Nice big chunky one. And you can see where he bit right straight, come up, filter feeding, pinched him right in the nose like that. And uh, pay attention to the, to the details. Now this fish, I can see that I worked him up off the bottom, worked up him off the bottom, then he went back down and he come right back up again. So, you know, whatever action or cadence, and that's a nice thing, I like this style of electronics, where I can actually see the history uh, of the lure. So whatever that lure is doing, that fish is reacting to it, make sure you duplicate that to catch more fish. So we'll let this one go. 